So the words like deep learning, image processing, computer vision, or machine learning mean anything to you? For me, these are over my head, but for you, this might be what you're studying in a degree or the kind of job you're looking into. Sumed has an incredible story about his career in these deep technical topics that he's gonna share and give great advice for you guys. So check it out. Hey friends, welcome to China Coaching. I'm Rob, and we love helping internationals be successful in their cross-cultural journeys, especially careers and studies and these deep, important topics that people are getting into, like machine learning, deep learning, computer engineering, computer vision. And so Sumed's story, his journey is going to be so helpful to give you guys background, tips, and guidance to see if these are the kind of things you should be studying or the jobs that you want to be working in. Sumed, go ahead and introduce yourself, buddy. Hi, uh, my name is Sumed. I hail from uh, Bangalore, India. I did my undergraduate studies in uh, medical electronics or the equivalent it's called biomedical engineering. I first got exposed to uh, image processing when I did my thesis wherein I had to do research on uh, identification of lesions or ulcers or abnormalities in colonoscopic images. And moving on after my undergraduate studies, I worked at a startup wherein I was working on uh, detection of cancerous regions in the oral or around the mouth. And then I moved on to another startup wherein I was working on uh, face recognition with deep learning. This was the first time wherein I got exposed to deep learning. And then I came to United States to do my master's in computer science and my specialization was in artificial intelligence and uh, art, uh, software engineering. I also got an opportunity to do an internship with large uh, convenience uh, chain called CERN 11 here wherein I was working as a data science intern, mainly working on classification and regression problems. Post-masters, I'm working uh, here with CERN 11 as a full-time research machine learning engineer, wherein I'm applying deep learning to computer vision in uh, retail scenarios. This is amazing. You've got so okay. much incredible experience in different focuses, in different fields and technical spaces. So I'm really excited to kind of dissect this, break this down and see what we can learn and help people figure out what they're going to be doing as well. Before I start uh, answering individual questions related to computer vision, I would like to say that uh, whatever I'm doing is uh, basically to educate people and also to help people to probably uh, get into this area. I am no uh, expert but whatever uh, I learned from my experience, I would like to just share it. And those who feel that this would be helpful, then that would be really great. Uh, I just wanted to say that this is just for educational purpose. And if you really want something very specific or if you want to get into this area uh, or want to know on a more deeper level, you can definitely consult an expert uh, because I'm no expert and I'm just going to share my experience with all of you. I hope it helps and uh, probably educate people. And also, if somebody who is very curious and wants to know more about this, probably from my experience, you can learn something. In this video, I'll be talking about two words. One is data and the other is neural networks. Data and images, I interchange a little bit. So basically what it means is just raw images. In computer vision, you deal with a lot of images. So when I say data, it means images. And when I say neural network, for a layman, a neural network is basically a pattern recognizer, basically identifying different, different, different patterns. Say, for example, you uh, take an image of a dog and then you pass it through the neural network. You can actually see that the network has learned the dog's eyes, uh, dog's nose and dog's ears. Or say, for example, uh, if you pass it through a car, you know that it has wheels and uh, the shape is somewhat like a rectangle. So neural networks are basically pattern recognizers, especially in computer vision. Thanks sure. for clarifying that, Sumed. So Sumed, you've been doing this kind of stuff for about seven years now. So what are some of the biggest things that you've learned since these last seven years working in computer vision? What I really noticed is I was very fortunate wherein I started off my career with computer vision and I'm still with computer vision. So I started off with traditional image processing techniques like color image processing, wherein I identify different colors like white color, red color and things like that, shape detection like circular and things like that. And also like textures, like different, different abnormalities have different, different textures. Two, deep learning wherein you have a neural network 
that is on a layman you can say our pattern recognizers which identify intrinsic patterns so what i really noticed is when i started off say the identification accuracy meaning if you give an image to the algorithm how many times it is correct to say that that is what it is right that it's the cancerous region or it's an abnormality so that was like probably in like 40s and 50s like 40% to 50% was what the algorithm accuracy would be like and then suddenly when you move towards deep learning it's near human level accuracy so if human level is mm. 100% accurate it's nearly that accurate because the machines are so good in identifying those patterns as similar to how a human would see it mm. so this was kind of the evolution that i noticed in the last 7 years and probably the reason why deep learning is advancing so much and solving a lot of real world problems that was not solved probably 8 or 9 years ago awesome now sima tell us a bit more just about the conceptual understanding with machine learning and deep learning I think in today's world what has happened is since deep learning has become so famous there are a lot of libraries that's available wherein you can just plug and play if you know certain languages and then you can build an app say an app to detect like a dog or an app to detect dog and a cat or a car and a bike but the real fun is when you actually understand what's happening behind the scenes like when you pass an image through a network what are those patterns that it's learning and then try to reason out as to why it told for example if you want to do a dog detector why is it actually telling that this is a dog or why is it actually telling this is a cat that is where the fun lies but to understand that you should be really strong with your machine learning concepts so you start off with your basics of machine learning and then get a deeper understanding of how traditional machine learning works and then slowly move towards deep learning and understand individual components of deep learning once you get a strong hold in these two uh, really big uh, buckets that is when uh, you can really start enjoying deep learning even more and then uh, start uh seeing a business problem and then applying deep learning algorithms to solve and give a solution now so what are some of the common problems that people face with deep learning machine learning computer vision and maybe what are some tips that on how they can deal with that data is the biggest thing it's the most important thing when you are actually trying to solve a business problem with deep learning because these neural networks are data hungry they need very good clean data to identify the patterns so in a real world when you are working on a business problem you're not going to get data straight sometimes the data is like so bad but there are like huge volumes of data sometimes there's very little data but you need lots of data sometimes there's like literally you know data but you have to actually create data so what do you do in this kind of a situation you re- have to go read couple of papers in the papers people actually specify the kind of data sets that they use and then go through the data set and then see uh, how the data is and based on that you get ideas say for example right google were actually uh, doing number recognition in the wild in the sense if you have numbers anywhere like any number you can actually say what the number is so they did a very smart thing they actually took numbers from different door numbers in a specific street so that way they collected a lot of numbers and the neural network got a lot of variety of these numbers and then it could actually do the recognition so well that was one thing the other thing was identification of humpback whales humpback whales have amazing patterns at their tail and not mm-hmm. anywhere else yeah. so if you actually get only the tail part of it you can actually identify what humpback it is so what i learned from this is there are some data sets available out there on uh, places like kaggle which is a very famous place for competing uh, with real mm-hmm. world data sets and then people are uh, winning so you can see the data sets there and also on different different papers wherein uh, you can actually see how uh, they're creating data so i saw a lot of data sets and then i started getting ideas as to how uh, we can create data set for our specific use case Definitely. There's so many good resources out there. We'll have that linked in the video description for you guys as well. And if you guys are learning some great stuff, give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to Sumed for sharing about his story, the things he's learned. And our chai question for this video is, what questions do you guys have about deep learning, machine learning, computer vision engineering? These are all topics that are new and way over my head. 
these are things that you might be studying or trying to get jobs in. So let us know in the comments what further questions you guys have or what you're trying to pursue in those fields. Next, Sumed, let's talk a little bit more about the importance of software engineering practices in developing computer vision based products. I actually haven't done much research in the academic field or I'm not worked as an academic researcher, but I've got exposed to a lot of research in the in the industrial uh, field. I mean, different industries as well have uh, different research cultures, but wherever I've worked, uh, this is what I've noticed. Uh, you do a good amount of research and then you come up with the algorithm. Once you have your algorithm, you need to build a product around your algorithm in such a way that an end customer can actually use it. So when you develop your algorithm, you should see it from the lens of an end customer of how he's going to use it to create the best experience, right? So to do this, you should be really strong with your software engineering skills. Software engineering skills has different uh, components. Like there's a very uh, famous term called a software engineering life cycle. I mean, it starts with analysis, then designing, development, testing, and things like that. So if you know these, uh, you can really build robust products. So software engineering skills is very, very important to build a product around the algorithm. The other thing that I would like to say is when it comes to software engineering, there are different techniques like waterfall or agile. Uh, so if you know these techniques, it'll be very easy to get involved in the team and then start delivering and build uh, robust products. So that's why software engineering plays a very big role. Definitely. So Sumed, what are just some tips you want to give for people who want to work in these areas of deep learning, machine learning, and computer vision engineering? To start off, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the basics of machine learning is very, very important. And then moving towards deep learning and then the individual components inside a deep neural network, that is again very, very important. Apart from that, um, software engineering skills as well is very important. Also, system design is very important. Like given a problem, how do you design an entire system? Okay, you have your algorithm, but how do you design an entire system, right? Whether it's going to be a mobile application or a desktop application, and what are the components that's needed to build a fully scalable uh, system? That is very important. And then programming skills, which involves algorithms and data structures, that is very, very important because when you are solving a business problem, you're not spending time on identifying the syntaxes of a specific programming language, but rather how to solve the business problems. So if you're very good with programming your algorithms or data structures, it's very easy to build products. Uh, so these are certain skills that's very, very important to develop computer vision based products because there's a good amount of research that happens and there's a good amount of engineering that happens. So you should have strong skill set in both the areas. When I say concepts of machine learning and uh, deep learning, just theory sometimes is not helpful. At least that didn't happen to me. There are a lot of YouTube videos that's available where it, uh, popular professors or popular researchers in the industry have explained complex concepts in a simple, easily understandable uh, way. Uh, when I mean easily understandable way, uh, they have taken a concept and they have shown visualizations of how it actually works so that uh, people can actually understand what is happening inside the network, what is it actually learning. So these things will actually help you in having a strong conceptual understanding of the concept. Uh, so when I say this, say for example, gradient descent algorithm is one very famous technique. So if you just go on Google and type gradient descent, uh, you get a bunch of blogs, like say a medium blog or different, different blogs. You can just open one of the blog and then just read it. There are like people who have explained it so well that you can easily understand and then the math behind it becomes very easy. Uh, so this is one tip uh, that really helped me wherein it was not just the theory from the textbook that I read, but these different blogs and these different YouTube videos, they helped me a lot. So this has been incredible. I've learned a lot and I know this is going to help guide a lot of people as well, especially if you're interested in these kind of career paths. So thank you so much for taking time to share about your journey and your lessons learned. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Rob. And everyone, be sure to connect with us online on social media. Be subscribed to the Chine Coaching Newsletter because we want to continue to help guide you guys to success in your cross-cultural journeys. And like this video to say thanks to Sumed and thanks so much for tuning in. 
We'll see you guys next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers.